Yeah, so I, as uh, uh, Professor Hawkes has uh, alluded to, I will speak about fatigue and cognition, and I think this is very important uh, symptoms of multiple sclerosis, and uh, they have a tremendous impact of, uh, on quality of life. Where does it go? Nope. There we are. No, that was too far. Sorry about that. So now we start again. I pressed the wrong button to start off with. This one, yeah, fatigue. Fatigue is a very important symptom of multiple sclerosis. It often occurs prior to, to even be diagnosed. And uh, up to 97% of all patients and people with multiple sclerosis do report fatigue. We all know that it is actually something that uh, alerts you that maybe a relapse is coming, and often patients uh, describe this overwhelming fatigue, and then they have other symptoms with it. It is described as a presenting symptoms in one-third of all MS patients, and it is the one that affects your quality of life and your daily activity most. It is often completely independent of uh, physical disability. And I want to state here that I'm not talking about secondary fatigue, which you can have as much as anyone else, secondary to sleep disorders or medication, and that's quite common in MS symptoms. So you might have the secondary fatigue together with the primary MS fatigue. Um, you, lots of you take uh, antidepressants that make you tired. You might take uh, medication for spasticity, which makes you tired. You might have additional thyroid disease. You might be depressed that makes you fatigued. So there is lots um, that can contribute. But even if that doesn't occur, there is an intrinsic fatigue due to MS. And there are three different theories why this fatigue exists. There is the theory of inflammation, and um, I particularly am interested in that and think this is probably the cause of the MS fatigue. Similarly to a viral infection, there's a lot of circulating cytokines and inflammatory cells, and you feel like a bus has hit you. Yeah? There's a second theory that it's due to demyelination, so as uh, Michael has explained, with a little uh, macrophage nibbling away your myelin sheet, and if the myelin sheet is gone, then your nerve conduction is a lot slower. Or it might be due to axonal damage. The more nerves actually degenerated, the more fatigued you are. Um, one of my early studies looked at uh, PET scans and uh, we know uh, PET scans do look at metabolism, glucose metabolism in your brain, and it can, so the things that light up is the ones where the most energy is used in the brain. So we know that multiple sclerosis patients have overall reduced uh, metabolism compared to healthy controls. And we looked at uh, fatigued patients versus um, non-fatigued patients and found that um, um, here in the frontal areas, uh, and uh, in the basal ganglia, patients with fatigue light up more. Management of fatigue is a very difficult issue. Uh, best what we can do is probably just give good advice for non-pharmacological treatment, to stop smoking, to reduce your caffeine intake because you do have a rebound phenomenon of that, to adjust your sleep pattern uh, everybody needs eight hours sleep and make sure that you really are rested and don't use your computer in the night. I mean, what they tell the youth is true for the adults as well. Adjust your daily activity. If you are fatigued, you probably need to recharge your batteries in the afternoon yeah, and take a short nap. 
Always have shown that regular exercise actually doesn't make you more fatigued, but gives you more energy. Pharmacological treatment has been disappointing. There's no good study showing any evidence of any of the drugs. Uh, most of us use amantadine, and a third of patients respond and report a good effect of it. Pemeline is another one that in some patients does work. There's one study uh, on, on only 72 patients in a single arm trial that showed that modafinil um, is effective with um, multiple sclerosis. But you need to be aware that it has a strong typhylaxis and you will need to take higher and higher doses. Um, but a larger study, which has only been sh published uh, early this year, where it was placebo controlled, and it shows over and over again how important it is to have placebo controlled trials, shows that there is no effect whatsoever. Yeah. Um, how important fatigue and cognition is for multiple sclerosis patient uh, is nicely shown by a study from Clinis Clark and Bruce Taylor, who uh, looked all over New Zealand and collected up to 3,000 patients. Typical distribution, predominantly female, predominantly relapsing, remitting. And they looked at the self-reported reasons for change of employment status. And fatigue, as you can see here, is the predominant symptom. Um, lower body motor function, but also cognition. Very important points to keep you all in the working force. So looking at the percent of age group uh, employed, uh, so the blue ones are male, the pink ones are female, and it, they compared MS patients to census data. So the dotted ones are healthy people or the overall generation, and uh, people with uh, multiple sclerosis are the ones with this uh, continuous line. And you can see that fairly short after already onset of symptoms prior to diagnosis, yeah, there's a drop in employment. And this is true also for the median annual income. Uh, we all know that uh, multiple sclerosis actually affects predominantly uh, higher income people, but this drops very quickly after the diagnosis. And also no doubt that there's still a big gap between male and female, and I don't think that's only in New Zealand. Now to the prevalence of cognitive deficits. This depends very much who is looking at that. Um, so we as neurologists, we're actually quite poor in deciding if someone has cognitive de uh, difficulties or not. That is probably because uh, you still uh, uh, try to impress us with, uh, <laughs> with your appearance. So if you, though, tested, and lots of you will have had that, um, a three-hour grueling uh, neuropsychological testing where they're giving all sorts of stories that you then have to remember again and, and remember word lists and all that, then we will find that actually up to 65% will have difficulties. We always thought that this was uh, a late-stage symptom, but more and more uh, it shows that it actually occurs early in the disease. And uh, a very recent uh, study from Potagos showed that here 30% already had cognitive deficits, which means more than three tests failed in this three-hour testing at the first symptom. And this is about what we find in our uh, um, group as well, but when you're secondary progressive, then you're probably up to 80%. It has a tremendous impact on your life. Cognitively impaired people with MS retire independent from their physical ability. They're more likely to be dependent on other people, more likely to have fewer social contacts more likely to have accidents, and that's why you're required to report your disease to RTA. And unfortunately, and that's particularly bad, less likely to adhere to medication, and I'll tell you why in a minute. As I said, neurologists are not very good in picking up cognitive deficits. This is because when you sit in our rooms and we talk to you, your language is not affected. Communication is still happening, even at this quite tremendous deficits. But it's information processing on memory, problem solving, which is the problem. 
and which is required when you work, when you explained uh, your task and it takes you longer to understand it and you need to be repeated, then uh, this makes work really difficult. Why is that so? Uh, these are functional imaging studies and I find them fascinating. So PET is one idea to do and see where the activity in brain is happening and functional MRI, it does it similarly. So it lights up where the brain is currently working. So people, as you can see, people that have um, a right arm weakness and are asked to move the right arm use the left hemisphere as well, whereas control subjects don't, yeah? So you do need to require more brain if you have a deficit. And similarly, in a cognitive deficit, so the top line is control subjects. Uh, these are mildly impaired MS patients, and these are severely cognitive impaired patients. These people probably function quite well in the workforce, but they need a lot more brain activity on probably very tired at the end of the day of the working time, yeah, and achieve to achieve the same goal as these ones because they don't use as much energy. Yeah. Here, when you're secondary progressive and have obvious cognitive deficits, your brain doesn't use that much energy anymore because you just can't, and then the deficits are obvious. But these are the ones that clean and kill isolated symptoms that, you know, do need more energy to do the same job as they've done before. It's not all doom and gloom. Uh, already in uh, 2000, the first uh, Avonex um, trial, pivotal trial, they have uh, tested the patients with the prefrapetable battery. And all patients over the uh, study period did decline. But you can see that the ones that were on placebo uh, declined more so than the ones that were on Avonex. And this first study is sort of repeated, but uh, unfortunately, none of the other pivotal trials have used full cognitive screening. So this is the five-year beta interferon trial, and this is just looking at the Passat, which is, um, many of you might have done that. This is a terrible test where you have to add the last heard number to the new one that you hear, but it, you don't, you can't keep adding. You need to always add the new one to the last one heard. So you need to be quite attentive over a long period of time, and it's 50 um, numbers that you are told, and it's hard. In the benefit trial, you've seen that the ones that uh, were started early on treatment improved more. Both groups improved. That's probably a practice effect. But both improved, but more so when you were started early on treatment. And similarly, in a natalizumab study, the ones that were on um, natalizumab significantly better than the ones were on control, improved during the study period, which again, I think is only reflecting practice effect, but it has a positive effect. Unfortunately, the same can't be said for platyrimer acetate. Uh, they have done a full study with brief repeatable battery in the pivotal trial, tested after 12 and 24 months, and couldn't find any significant difference. And then uh, the study, the follow-up study, um, where they looked at 10-year follow-up, was always criticized because they only succeeded in getting 42 patients, 42% uh, of their patients back for review. And they have published it saying, well, there's good news, uh, nobody really deteriorates over 10 years, but if you, maybe not tremendously, the overall cognitive function doesn't deteriorate significantly, but uh, if you look at the single tests, they all showed significant worsening and there was only a minimal difference between the ones that were originally, they all were on treatment after the two years, so any effect will then always be diluted. Yeah. Symptomatic treatment, um, acetylcholine esterase inhibitor are used for Alzheimer and improve or slow down the progression of uh, cognitive deficits in Alzheimer, but they have been disappointing in uh, multiple sclerosis. So um, memantine was studied, and that study was uh, stopped very early because nine patients reported uh, worsening of their MS symptoms. 
The river stickmin was studied only over three months, uh, but didn't show any effect. There was an early study on donepicil from Lauren Krupp, and she could show some difference in the single digit modality test, but not in Passat. And unfortunately, uh, again, uh, this year's study from 120 placebo controlled, again, the placebo controlled bigger trial didn't show any benefit. What about um, cognitive rehabilitation? There is a lot of small studies out there. I mean, we were one of the first to develop a computer training program um, where our patients did improve, but we didn't have a, a control arm, so uh, the study was always criticized. This is a recent Italian study where they looked at 150 patients. 20 of them were more than one and a half standard deviation below their expected age and education norm. And 10 of them went into treatment, which meant an interactive program three hours per week for three months, and the other 10 didn't. And uh, lots of the subtests improved. But again, a larger study, this time only single arm, did not show any benefit. So there is lots more to do uh, how we can improve cognitive deficits, and the best what I can suggest so far um, is to go to the Emma Society UK website. They have a very nice uh, information sheet for you, how to manage best your difficulties in life and what to do to overcome them to still have a good life. So in summary, fatigue and cognitive impairments occur early on in the disease. They have a major impact on your quality of life employment, income. They're often insufficiently tested for. Unfortunately, symptomatic treatment has so far not shown to be effective. But disease-modifying treatments seem to have a positive effect. And we're about uh, to publish data that really it does in the clinical setting. People that are on treatment and remain on treatment do do better than ones that are not on treatment. And therefore, I find it essential to monitor for these symptoms, to monitor for fatigue, and to monitor for cognition. And I can only do that because I've got a very good and nice team that supports me in testing my patients all the time. Thank you.